hello video lesson <laughs> i'm here in the art room welcome to art class we are going to be doing this on our watercolor paper for our final project if i am your teacher and if you're watching on um, youtube welcome what we did is have a personal theme and verse or sometimes students pick a poem in a neat font here i use bubble letters with shadow here i used old english all right, we went over that with Sharpie. Then we have a scene. We've been studying ancient China. We got inspired from uh, Panda, Kung Fu Panda and Milan. So we have some distant hills. First you draw and they're lighter in distance and we have some waterfalls. What else did we have? Trees. And I'll be dabbing on some trees with you and some personal expression, things we like in the foreground, okay? This one I already did. We're gonna start with the background today, and then tomorrow we're gonna to work on the foreground and all your fine details. What we did here is, remember the name of that? You guys at home? The control drip. So right now I'm gonna use lots of water and a thick enough brush. You guys know my favorite are my Chinese landscape brushes because they can get thin on the end and have enough to have a nice thick layer of water that goes on. See how it gets thick? And if you don't have a Chinese landscape brush, that's fine. Just use a thin brush to go around the edges and a thick brush so you can get a lot of water. Now what I'm gonna do is do, you could do this with acrylic or watercolor, and it is called the control drip. Use lots of water, either way. I have a canvas where I did this and on my YouTube channel with acrylic as well. Now why we're doing the background first is cause you can, because you can then overlap the background to the foreground and then you layer your hills like with black will layer on top. So if you go out of the lines right now, that's fine. Now as you do the sky, the sky is reflected in the what guys? You guys at home, Derek and Josh? The sky is reflected in Elijah? Water. Yes, thank you, the water. So as you do the sky and you have your cool colors here, you're gonna do some reflection in the water and where you have the waterfalls. Okay, I have a little dolphin peeking out. So you wanna go back and forth to show some of the ripples in the water. And quite frankly, the clouds, we have mist. So I'm gonna use a little bit of reflection in my mist just by going side to side. And if it shows too dark and too much of your brush strokes, use a little more water, okay? And make that really see through. All right, so far I'm controlling the drip of the pink. And if you know me, I am trying to get you guys to use your favorite colors that's why we did a get to know you homework assignment where I asked you what's your favorite color. Think about your things. If Mrs. Smith's favorite is the pink and periwinkle sunsets, and I'm gonna get some periwinkle near the top, then what's your favorite color? And do you wanna add that in your sky? With the control drip is, I think, the best technique to work on if you guys have me and you have this great watercolor paper, it's really absorbent. And if you rub it too much, it's still, it's not, it's not gonna have the nice natural effect that what I'm teaching you right here is gonna have by adding lots of water. Are you guys ready to rock it? Are you following along with me? And do a little reflection of the yellow in the water. I'm gonna put a little yellow on my lion, a little bit on my clouds. All right, now I got the yellow, it's all gathering there. So now you have to bend and rock it. Remember, like rocking a baby, go back and forth. See that drip? and rock it, and you wanna look at the way, the direction your control drip is going. And if you don't like the way it looks, just like driving a race car, you gotta go vroom down. Oops, see the drip going there? Ah, it's going to my hills. So then you rock it back the other way. And you wanna rock it till you get the desired effect, okay? Now the yellow's going straight up there, so I'm gonna go side to side. My drip's gonna go off the edge, so I'm gonna tilt it. Oh, and I dripped it on this one. I dripped right off. If you do drip on another one, you just go back and forth with a little bit of water to make it look natural, all right? Because water, it's a see-through wash. You can see closely where I had the drip and where I just blended it in with a really light water to make it look like a cloud and how I reflected it in the water. Okay, and there's the dog, Daisy, a dog. All right, so, so far I have the pink and the the yellow and it's blended so I have a nice coral color. Now I like periwinkle which is light blue and light purple and remember as the sun sets it gets darker up a further from the horizon line so I'm gonna add some blue and purple the highest area up here. Ooh that's too blue. So I'm gonna clean my brush 
and add some more purple. Where's my purple, peeps? Here you go, someone contaminated the purple. That's what we get for sharing with my class, right? My whole class shares these watercolors, clean them out, there we go. We got some purple and light blue, and it looks a little dark because I need to add water to make it lighter now. Now, as you can see, I'm going right over my font design, and now I'm gonna start rocking it. And that, my friends, is your lesson on the control drip. I'm gonna keep rocking it because I don't want those squiggly lines to stay there. I'm gonna rock it in the direction I want and I'm gonna reflect some of these colors in my mist, waterfalls, and in the sky. Now tune in tomorrow to see the next lesson as we're gonna paint over the foreground. So right now we're working with the drip, the control drip, to do an amazing, hopefully, masterpiece of yours with all your favorite colors. Now remember, if your paper starts to bend, you gotta, you gotta control it. That's why it's good to control it. And I, I kinda consider it like the way you rock a baby back and forth and back and forth. And you're watching where the drip is going. And if you don't want it to look unnatural like that, you have to keep dripping it till it sets, till it gets a little bit dry. So you have to hold it and rock it and control that drip or else it's gonna look unnatural. All right? And then don't forget that the sky and the mist will reflect, be reflected in the water. And your waterfalls, your water, and your mist are all made of particles of water, so they'll reflect the sky just like a mirror. And that'll make your art look a little more natural. And if you go right over your foreground, that's okay. When we do the darker, like a black color on there and a rocky color, it'll go right over your background. That's why you do your background first. All right, any questions? I'm gonna keep rocking this baby and over and out from the art room. Peace out, my friends. Can't wait to see yours.